So I have a very important question for you. Are the pillars of creation actually destroyed? So I can vividly remember the first Hubble picture of the pillars of creation in 1995. And this picture it actually inspired me to uh, learn more about astronomy and to eventually get into astrophotography, which I have been doing for the past couple of years now. So if you are an amateur astrophotographer and you would like to get more information on how to perform astrophotography from your backyard, uh, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, please check out my website astroforumspace.com where I write free blogs and make free videos on how to perform amateur astrophotography from your backyard. Um, so yeah, I recently imaged the Eagle Nebula and at the heart of the Eagle Nebula are the pillars of creation through my small 80 millimeter telescope. So I just first wanted to share this picture with you by inserting some intense cosmic music here. So when we take a look at my picture, you can see the elephant trunks of interstellar gas and dust at the heart of the Eagle Nebula. And they are actually named the pillars of creation because the gas and dust, they are in the process of creating new stars, so that's pretty awesome. And they are also being eroded by light from nearby stars that have recently formed. And the Hubble picture of the Pillars of Creation in 1995 was actually the, one of the top astro pictures shared on the web. And I remember I was 18 years old at the time and uh, it took me several minutes to download this picture using a telephone connection. So just to give you a sense of size, when you look at the leftmost pillar, this is already about four light years in length. So this is roughly the same distance as the distance from our sun to the nearest star in our Milky Way, Proxima Centauri. And as another example, the finger-like projections at the top of the clouds, they are already larger than our solar system. So we are pretty tiny in comparison to the Eagle Nebula. And this region, it was actually re-photographed by Hubble in 2014 with a newer camera. And this picture had a huge cultural impact as it was featured on everything from t-shirts to coffee mugs. And so the Hubble pictures, they were basically used by anyone who wanted to do a little side hustle. So what about this conspiracy theory? Are the pillars of creation actually destroyed? <laughs> so. Could be, because about a decade ago, there were some professional astronomers who actually argued that the pillars of creation would have been destroyed already. And yeah, they based their arguments on images taken with the Spitzer Space Telescope, which uncovered a cloud of hot dust in the vicinity of the pillars of creation that might indicate a shock wave produced by a supernova. And this shock wave would already have destroyed the pillars of creation about 6,000 years ago. But given the distance of roughly 7,000 years between Earth and the pillars of creation and the Eagle Nebula, this would mean that uh, yeah, they, they have already been destroyed. But because light travels at a finite speed, at light speed of course, uh, this destruction should be visible about 1,000 uh, years from now. So just remember, we are looking back in time when we are looking at the Eagle Nebula in this case. We are looking 7,000 years back in time, so light that has left the Eagle Nebula 6,000 years ago would take another 1,000 years to reach Earth. But actually this theory is being debunked because uh, yeah, you have two Hubble images 
and they were taken 20 years apart and they provided new information about the rate of the evaporation occurring within the pillars. And this new data actually suggests that there was in fact no supernova explosion in the vicinity of the pillars of creation. So right now it is estimated that the pillars of rea uh, creation will be around uh, the Eagle Nebula for at least 100,000 years more. So let me know in the comment section. Do you believe that the pillars of creation were destroyed? So as an amateur astrophotographer living in Utrecht, the Netherlands, I have three particular challenges to overcome when trying to capture the Eagle Nebula. And the first challenge I have is that I have a limited capturing time during a single night. So let me just explain that to you. Let's zoom in a little bit. So this is actually the southern sky from my location, from my uh, terrace in Utrecht. And um, from my latitude, 52 degrees latitude, the Eagle Nebula, it will just past this three-story building and then uh, I can capture it for maybe two or three hours and then it will set again uh, behind one of these houses. So the first thing I do to overcome this issue is to plan uh, imaging sessions across multiple nights. And I'm using Sequence Generator Pro and also particularly the plate solving option in Sequence Generator Pro to position my telescope and my mount exactly the same across multiple nights. So a second challenge I'm always dealing with as an amateur astrophotographer is of course light pollution. I'm living in the city and you can see here over here we have this beautiful street light already and uh, here uh, we have this nice three-story building which lights up like a Christmas tree uh, during the night. So uh, one of the main things that I have been doing to overcome light pollution is using narrowband filters. And for those of you who do not know what narrowband filters are, um, I have a video actually on filters and narrowband filters. I will link this up in the video here. And um, yeah, basically with narrowband filters you can capture a specific part of the light spectrum while blocking out all other sources of light that create light pollution, such as these uh, beautiful uh, three-story buildings that I have uh, in the background here. So a third challenge that every amateur astrophotographer, including myself, has to deal with is the fact that we are trying to capture faint light from objects in deep space. So in case of the Eagle Nebula, you have to realize that this light from the Eagle Nebula and the Pillars of Creation, it has been traveling for over 6,500 years before it reaches Earth. And um, because of that, we actually need multi-minute exposure. So we have to take multi-minute pictures of the same deep sky object. And actually we take a lot of those pictures. So uh, in total, we might collect 10 hours of data on that uh, particular deep sky object and we stack all of these images together. Yeah, I was able to take this picture of the Eagle Nebula across multiple nights using some essential astrophotography equipment such as my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, my CWO 1600 Mono Pro camera, this is actually a monochrome camera, that I used in combination with some dedicated narrowband filters to capture the various ionized gases that are present within the Eagle Nebula. And there are links to the equipment that I have used to create this picture are in the video description below if you're interested. So finally, let me also share some post-processing techniques I have used to create the final image of the Eagle Nebula. So um, I took multiple pictures with an exposure time of five minutes each using three different narrow band filters. So an H-alpha filter, an S2 filter and an O3 filter. And this is an example of a single five minute picture of the Eagle Nebula in H-alpha. And I was really surprised to see that even at a single picture, the heart of the Eagle Nebula with the pillars of creation was already quite visible. And uh, yeah, I used a popular software program called PixInsight to stack all of these images together. So this is the stacked image of 55 single pictures of the Eagle Nebula taken with my hydrogen alpha filter. And similarly, you can see that this is the stack of the 32 images that I've taken with my oxygen 3 filter. And uh, finally, this is the stack of 25 images where I use the uh, Sulfur 2 narrowband filter. And I combined these three stacked images into one overall false colored picture of the Eagle Nebula. And it's important to mention that this is a false colored image because uh, there's also a lot, always a lot of debate on how real are these astrophotography pictures. 
And in this case, you can say that it's, it's a false color picture because then the colors, they do not actually correspond with the actual color of the nebula, which is mainly red. But they do correspond with the different elements that are present within this nebula. So when you look at the yellow goldish part in this picture, they actually correspond with ionized hydrogen gases within this nebula. And when you look at the blue uh, colors of the Eagle Nebula, they correspond with the oxygen that is present within this nebula. So this way of composing a deep sky astrophotography picture has actually been called a Hubble pellet picture because astronomers in the Hubble project actually use a very similar po process to compose their pictures. So uh, when you look at Hubble Space Telescope pictures, uh, you have to, to imagine that the colors of these pictures, they do not represent the actual, actual colors of the deep sky object that we are looking at, but it does represent the different elements that are present within that particular uh, deep space object. So yeah, I hope you liked this video. Please feel free to ask me any questions about astrophotography in the comment section. And uh, yeah, I hope you give this video a thumbs up and I hope you will subscribe to my channel. And of course, I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. And until that time, I want to wish you clear skies.